السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على حبيبك المصطفى يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله Today, inshallah, our hadith is talking about as-salah. It's talking about performing prayers. And it's about standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting connected with him. An Ubadat ibn al-Samit radiyallahu anh qal, Sami'tu Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, خمس صلوات افترضهن الله على عباده فمن جاء بهن لم ينتقص منهن شيئا استخفافا بحقهن فإن الله جاعل له يوم القيامة عهدا أن يدخله الجنة ومن جاء بهن قد انتقص منهن شيئا استخفافا بحقهن لم يكن له عند الله عهد إن شاء عذبه وإن شاء غفر له. So it was narrated that عباد بن الصامت رضي الله عنه said, I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say, five prayers that Allah has enjoined upon his slaves. So whoever does them and does not omit anything out of negligence, on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a covenant with him that he will admit him to paradise. But whoever does them but omits something from them out of negligence, will will not have such a covenant with Allah. If he wills, he will punish him. And if he wills, he will forgive him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written five prayers for mankind. So whoever has... Uh, who, uh, so whoever has a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then is going to meet him in these five prayers every day. So five times to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. Now imagine that you love someone. And you love that person. A love that you, you never have loved anyone the same way. So what happens, you feel that you long to see this person one time after the other, now and then, any any time that you that you that you can meet him. Now we say we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to thank him for allowing us to meet him these many times a day. So five prayers every day. We stand in a prayer and we talk directly to Allah. No mediator. No one to convey our words to him. We talk to him directly. We talk to him through his words, the Holy Quran. So, how should we perform our prayers? And again, remember to perform our prayers, to perform the qiyam, to perform the recitation, to perform the ruku'ah, to perform the sujood, to 
to perform the tashahud. So this is what is called yuqimun as-salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran said these words. He did not say, sallu or wayusallu. He, he added another word. He, compi he combined another word with the word salah, which is yuqimun as-salah. So yuqimun as-salah is to perform the prayer. It's not just movements. It's being present, being present while being in a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, a prayer is to show the continuity of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a risk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared to his slaves. So how would someone accept to deprive himself of this risk? If someone knows that there is a treasure in this, in this, under this uh, uh, rock, then he will go immediately to, to uh, dig and take this, this treasure. Now, how would someone keep himself away from this treasure? How would someone accept to be away from being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talking to him? So a prayer is the time when someone meets Allah, when someone talks to Allah. It's a smaller version of the day of judgment where all of us are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are all humble in front of him. We are all humble in front of his majesty. But some people are headless. They, they, they miss the point behind meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they do that when, when they get distracted by the trivial things, trivial things of this vanishing dunya. Sometimes when we, when when anyone prays, then their mind will be engaged in this dunya. What happened? What are we eating today? Uh, who got the the kids to school? Who's going to bring them back? Uh, I forgot something. I uh, I did this. I did that. Now, where is the presence of the prayer? So some people would say when, when they finish praying, we cannot remember how many rakas did we pray? Was it two rakas or three? Was it three or four? So we were not present at all while we were praying. So how can we how can we overcome this problem? Of course, there are so many ways to do that, and these these ways can be uh, divided into several categories: before starting the prayer, while praying, and after the prayer. So. Before starting the prayer, we have to get prepared. We have to get our heart prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing we do before we, we start our prayer, we say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim So we are, we are getting the shaytan away from our way. 
and we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his name when we say Bismillah rahman rahim so that we want to focus on our prayers, Ya Allah. We want to be alert of what we are talking to you, Ya Allah. We cannot do it, so we ask your help, Ya Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now, with these, with these few words, we feel that our heart is getting ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when we say Allahu Akbar, when we say Allahu Akbar, then what happens? We are declaring that, we are declaring that we are leaving this dunya away, we are leaving all its adornments away, all its problems away, and we are now in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are enjoying the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that we started, what do we do while we are praying? When we start reciting Al-Fatiha, we know that this surah is a conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and us. And we talked about, uh, about this thoroughly, uh, about this conversation thoroughly in session four of this, of, the, of this series. What does every ayah mean? What does it, uh, how, how we say the ayahs and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers us. So go back to, to, to session four of this series and listen again to what it means to read Al-Fatiha. Then, after the Fatiha, we read short surah or a few lines, a few pages of a long surah. Now, to focus on, on the prayer, try to read a different surah every time. Try to, 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 to read a, a surah that you recently memorized so that you keep focusing on the ayahs, on the words that you are reading. Now, we are done with reciting Surah Al-Fatiha and then a short surah. When, when we uh, uh, are done with that, then we bow and then we, uh, so we do the rukur and then we follow it by the sujood. So when we do the rukur and we follow it by the sujood, we understand the real meaning of the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are his slaves. We are only slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when someone relies this servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can we we understand that we can do nothing except with, with Allah's permission. So that knowing, knowing all of this, then we know that we can uh that um whatever we have. Whatever we do can all vanish in just a blink of an eye. We are servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can do nothing except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted us to do. And when we are successful, then we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to thank him 
for making us successful. It's not our work. It's not our uh, what uh, our hard work that made us successful. No. If that was not permitted for us to be successful, then it won't have happened. So we have to have these, this in mind. We have always to remember that we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nothing can happen except with his permission. And this can be manifested while we are bowing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while we are doing sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are a lot of ayahs in the Holy Quran that talk about performing the prayers. And of course, the Quran starts with Surah Al-Fatiha. And we said that Surah Al-Fatiha is a summary of the whole Quran. And it is called the mother of the Quran, Umm Al-Kitab, the mother of the book. Then, Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the second surah, starts with talking about the believers, the, uh, those who have, who, who, whose hearts, whose conscience is alert. So, هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًى مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So those conscious, conscious of Allah, those people who are conscious of Allah, who believe in the unseen, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ they establish the prayer. They perform the prayer. And they spend out of what we have provided for them. So who are those people? Those are the guided people by their Lord. And it's those who are successful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala urged the believers to perform the prayers. And he urged them to, to be steadfast on the prayers, to hold tight to the prayers. So he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 238, Maintain with care the obligatory prayers. Be careful. Do not lose them. And in particular, the middle prayer. And stand before Allah devoutly obedient. And the list goes on and on and on about the ayahs in the Holy Quran that talk about performing the prayers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that there is a reward for every obeyed order. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to perform the prayers. And there is a reward for that. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 277, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the reward for those who perform the prayers. In Ladina Amenu Amilu Salihati wa Akamu Salata wa Atau Zakatalahum, Lahum Ajurum Rabbihim, 
ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds and establish the prayers, perform the prayers, give zakah, will have their reward with their Lord. And there will be no fear concerning them. There will be no fear. Nor will they grieve. لا خوف عليهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لكن يراسخون في العلم منهم والمؤمنون يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما, وما أنزل من قبلك والمقيمين الصلاة والمؤتون الزكاة والمؤمنون, والمؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر أولئك سنؤتيهم أجرا عظيما But those firm in knowledge among them and the believers believe in what has been revealed to you, Ya Muhammad. And what was revealed also before you. And the establishers of the prayers, those who perform the prayer and give the givers of zakah, and the believers in Allah and the last day. So what are those? Who are those? What will happen to those? Those will, we will give a great reward. So now we might ask, what is this reward? So one of the rewards of the believing Muslims who perform the prayers is mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضٍ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهَ أُولَئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ so the believing men and believing women are, they are allies of one another. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong. So these are the characteristics of the believers, men and women. So... Uh, those people, they establish the prayer, they give the zakah, and they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. So what happens? What will happen to them? <laughs> those, Allah will have mercy upon them. Inna Allah azizun hakim. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. Now, imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on you, uh, over you. So what will happen? You will be in paradise. Allah, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْجَنَّةَ بِعَمَلِهِ قَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ وَلَا أَنَا إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِي اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَتِهِ so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, no one will get into paradise with according by his action. And they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, not even you? He said, not even me, me unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get me, uh, will have his mercy upon me. So now those believing men and believing women will have mercy upon them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the list again goes on and on about those believers 
who perform the prayer. Now, if, if we ask ourselves, what's the difference between praying and performing the prayer? And I mean by this, what's the result of performing a prayer or praying? And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that some people will have from their prayers just only going up and down and the movements of the prayer. So they will not have the reward for the prayer because they are not actually praying. They are just doing some exercise. Going up, going down, going up, going down. That's it. مَنْ لَمْ تَنْهَهُ صَلَاتُهُ عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ فَلَا صَلَاةَ لَهَا Whoever his prayer did not prevent him from doing bad deeds, and then... The reward of his, of his prayer is just some exercise movements. Because when someone prays, then he is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is receiving the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is receiving the light of the prayer. Then that light will be in his heart. And that light will help him to perform good. But if someone does, is just doing the, the actions, just the movements, just an exercise, then this will not happen to him. So we have to, to observe what we are doing. We have to, to be careful. And we have always to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. He's overwatching us. And we have to remember that there are angels who are recording our actions. So the prayer, one of the merits of the prayer, one of the results of performing a prayer is that a person would always remember that Allah is overwatching. A person would always remember, that, uh, would be always alert that Allah is with him. Allahu ma'i, Allah is with me. Allahu naziri, Allah is looking over me. Allahu shahidi, Allah is witnessing whatever I do. فَمَنْ جَاءَ بِهِنَّ لَمْ يَنْتَقِسْ مِنْهُنَّ شَيْئًا So whoever does or perform the prayer and does not waste anything of the prayer, any part of the prayer, then what happens? So he does not waste anything, any part of them by making light of what is due to them. So do not belittle any, any action of the prayer. So, there will be an, a, a covenant between this person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will admit him into, into paradise. So this is the reward for those who perform the prayer. So whoever does not do them and there is no impact for, uh, for him with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no pact. There is no covenant. So, 
إن شاء عذبه وإن شاء غفر له. If Allah wishes, then he will punish that person. And if he wishes, he, he can forgive that person. So it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, performing the prayer is one of the types of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are a lot of fiqh that explains this type of worship in full details. And this is a unique way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So performing the prayers never stops. It never stops. Even if the person is sick, so he, if, if anyone, whoever is unable to perform the prayer standing, then he must do it sitting. And whenever, whoever cannot do it sitting, then he should, he should do it while he's laying down. So, this is a continuous, unique way to worship Allah. So, so when the call of the prayer is heard, an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every person to stand before him and be in his prayer. This is why when any problem used to uh, to uh, face Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what happened? He used to, to perform some, some prayers. He used to, to perform a few rak'ahs of praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a sunnah. When you have a calamity, when you have a problem, when you have any issue that you want Allah's help, just make wudu, pray to rakas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him, ask him whatever you want. And we mentioned this over and over that the best time to, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything is the time before Adhan al-Fajr. It is the time before Fajr gets in. Make wudu. Pray to Rakas and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever you want. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined five prayers every day. That if we do them, we will be rewarded. But if someone decides not to do them, then the door of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be in his presence, then this door is closed. And it's not that this person does not want to pray. No, look at it from a different angle. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to hear the voice of this person. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story about one of the companions at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the masjid praying the night prayer. So he said, okay, I, I will pray uh, 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 with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, he prayed with him and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started with Surah Al-Baqarah. So he finished Surah Al-Fatiha and started with the next Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah. 
And this person said uh, to himself, okay, it will be a few pages and then he will make report. Well, these few pages were not few pages. See, the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept on going after a few pages. So he said, okay, maybe see the Muhammad will, will read only half a juz. Half a juz passed and see the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is still praying. He is in his first, first rakah, by the way. So he said, okay, uh, I think at the end of the first juz, he will stop. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on and on and on and he did not stop at the end of the first juzu. So this person said, this companion said, radiallahu an, he said, okay, I'm sure he will, stand, uh, he, he will stop at the end of the second juzu. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not stop at the end of the second juzu. He kept on and on. He finished Surah Tul Baqarah. Then he started Surah Ali Imran, and then he finished Surah Ali Imran. And the person saying, okay, I'm sure he is going to make Ruku'ah now. And, but Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went with Surah Al-Nisa, and he finished Surah Al-Nisa until that person said to himself, okay, I am, I am I'm going to do Salam, and then I will pray two short rakahs, and that's it. So, what happened to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He was enjoying the meeting between him and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He did not notice that he read so many juzah. He did not notice that uh, he went over a um, hundred page he did not notice anything he's in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the things that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted us to do uh, was an answer to one of the questions that he, his one of his companions has ha, 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 has asked him he came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ayyu al-a'mali afdal ya Rasulullah? And Sayyidina, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajab, as-salatu ala waqtiha. So the best action to do or the best thing to do is to perform the prayer immediately after Adhan calls for it. Now, someone might say, okay, uh, I just heard the Adhan call, the call for the, uh, for the prayer, and I am working. I cannot stop. I cannot take a break. So he is a doctor performing the procedure. He is a pilot driving the plane. He is he's someone who is doing... Uh, a major, major work. Well, for this person, we say, how about if you are doing this, this job of yours that you think you cannot leave, how about if you want to go to, to use the restroom? Would you or would you not? So a few minutes of your time would not be impossible to perform a prayer. So, sometimes people who are not Muslims, they, they would admire, admire you when they would look at you and see that you are performing the, your prayers. And so many people got into Islam just for watching people, how they are performing their, their uh, prayers. So when you 
when you pray at your work, then you are calling people to Islam without saying it. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you want to do, to perform your prayer, Allah will facilitate it for you. And when we do these five uh, prayers a day, then, as we mentioned, we are getting connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are getting closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Ya Bilal, arihna bis salah. O Bilal, make us at ease by praying, by calling for the prayer. We wouldn't pray. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam missed the few hours between the salah and the next salah without meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And he asked Bilal radiallahu an to call for the prayer. He wants to be talking. He wants to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the narrations, he said, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ so salah is made coolness of an eye to me. So he feels that he is enjoying his, his time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what makes the soul get, get tranquility. And we know that all uh, previous messages uh, ordered well, uh, ordered the people to pray. Now, when we we uh, we need to say that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered people to pray. So the order for the prayer came back uh, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he descended down to earth after al-Isra wal miraj So that was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoined the prayers on the Muslims. So all Muslims have to pray five times, uh, five times a day. But is that all? No. We just mentioned that it's a way to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can do all the sinan, all the nawafil. We can, we can pray way more than only five rakas, uh, uh, five times every day, every prayer, every day. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to pray. And when he said, hafidhu ala salawat, maintain the prayers, he meant do not waste them. Do not waste them. So, getting uh, connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through performing the prayer is something, is, is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in Surah Al-Fatih, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Muhammadun Rasulullah وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ تَرَاهُمْ سُجَّدًا سج... تَرَاهُمْ رُكَّعًا سُجَّدًا يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا سِيْمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, uh, uh, in ayah 29 of Surah Al-Fatih, which is the last ayah, he is talking about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. So he said, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those with him are forceful against the disbelievers, the non-believers, but they are at the same time merciful among themselves. And you can see them bowing and prostrating, prostrating in prayer, seeking bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure. So their mark is on their faces. There are marks on their faces from the trace of frustration. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us and he is talking about the characteristics of those people. The light, the light of the prayer is on their faces. سِيْمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ And الْوَاحِدُ مِنْهُمْ يَزِيدُكَ النَّظَرُ إِلَيْهِ قُرْبًا مِنَ اللَّهِ Looking at one of, the, of them would get you closer to Allah. And that's why uh, it is said, عَاشِرْ مَنْ يَنْهَضُكَ إِلَى اللَّهِ حَالُهُ وَيَدُلُّكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَقَالُهُ So be in the presence of people whom if you look at them, you will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they, if they speak, then their words will get into your heart and it, they, these words will get you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will get you to be elevated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will be happy when you see the, the people whom you love. But you will be really happy when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you perform the prayers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to perform. And until we meet, inshallah, next week, I send my salawat and your salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته